Hello art friends, Melissa here. Today I'm sharing how to create this 3x5 mixed media art card. This is one of my cards for the April swap. I'm using the color, theme, and technique challenges on this one. I'm going to show you five easy steps to build a background, so if you're new to mixed media this will be helpful. And if any of you are ever interested in swapping a card, just let me know. Step one is to apply your first layer of color. I'm rubbing on Distress Ink with the Ranger Mini Foam Applicator Tool. I'm applying Mustard Seed and Twisted Citron. I love the Distress Inks because they are so easy to work with and they blend so well. I'm using a piece of 120 pound watercolor paper because it's sturdy. If you specifically want to use index cards, you could glue a couple of those together. I'm drawing my card off camera after each step. Step two is to layer a stencil and apply a third color. I'm using Feather Peacock. I'm not inking over the entire stencil, just here and there and lighter in some areas. If you plan ahead where your focal point and journaling will be on your layout, it can be helpful in designing your background. Not necessary, but helpful sometimes. Don't want to waste any of that ink? Spray a little water on the side of the stencil with the ink on it, then press it on a blank page in your journal. And now you have your next background started. Step three is to apply some gesso. That will push back some of this color. And that's important because I'm using the same colors on my focal point and I want it to stand out from the background. I'm also using a horizontal stamp image that is very detailed and I want it to stand out against the background as well. I stamp the image on acetate so I can see how it will look up against the background. I'll store it with a stamp so I can do the same on future projects. Now I can visualize where I need to add the gesso so the image will stand out. I like using my finger because I feel like I have more control. Step four is to reevaluate. Do I need to add a little more color back on? And to add some stamping. This stamp is by Carabelle Studio and it's called Mixed Media Strips. It has two really cool images and I purchased it as well as the B I'm going to be using in a few minutes from Amazon. But I'm sure you could probably do a search and find it somewhere else. I'm using VersaFine Pigment Ink because it, I get a rich image when I use it. It's not waterproof unless you heat set it. If I needed a waterproof ink, I would use a dye or solvent ink, like palette or Stazon. To stamp an image like this, I use an acrylic block with a grid. I line the image with the horizontal lines on the block. Then when I stamp it, I'm making sure that the bottom line is aligned with the edge of the card. Next, I want to add some stamping to the rest of the background to add more interest, or maybe the word I'm looking for is texture. 
Notice the difference that it makes. I have a couple of go-to stamps I use for this. I like using clear stamps to do this because they're more flexible and it's easier for me to bend and just use a small part of the stamp image. I don't want to use the whole stamp image. So this is an example of one of the stamps I like to use. I'm not sure who makes it. It's really old. I am using some Saison solvent waterproof ink for this because I may go back and apply some gesso to areas that are too dark. It will also make these marks more cohesive with the background. I also have a paint splatter stamp that I love to use. It's by Red Rubber Designs. You can get her products on Etsy. But I didn't use it on this project because I'm using the honeycomb pattern. It fits better with my theme. And just a reminder, you're not seeing it in the video, but I am drawing the card in between each step. And step five, the final step, is to add a little more gesso here and there. As I mentioned a few moments ago, it will make the marks I just made more cohesive with the background. You can also add more color back in if you think it needs it during this step. All right, so that wraps up creating a background in five easy steps. If you're new to art journaling, I hope this helps get you started. Sometimes just starting the background can be intimidating. If you're inspired by this background tutorial, then please post a photo of your project using the hashtag inspired by paperlicious designs. I know it seems really long, but once you start typing it in, it'll pop up and then you can just click on it. I'll be checking Instagram once a week for your projects. Stick around and now I'll show you how I finished up this project. The next step is to stamp the B and Bingo card with waterproof ink. The B and Bingo card are both by Stampers Anonymous and you can find links to these in the description box below. After I'm done stamping these, I'm going to go off camera and trim them out. The next step is to add color to both the images. I do this by adding some of the same Distress Ink I used in the background to a stamp block. And because Distress Ink is water reactive, I can spray it with a little water, then apply it by either dripping, pressing the block to the paper, or using a paintbrush. At this point, I decided to dry it and see what it looks like. I didn't like how light it was, so I decided I needed to apply more color. But this time, I used a smaller block and used less water. Notice how I'm applying the blue ink where the B is going to be, and then the yellow over on the opposite side. I dried it again, then adhered the bead to the bingo card using Aileen's Tacky Glue. I like the newer cap design. It allows you to store the bottle upright so it's ready to go at all times. I was always losing that little white cap that used to come with it. The next step is to create my title. I trimmed a strip of paper, applied Distress Ink, and stamped the letters on it. The next step is to grunge it up, adding ink around the edges, and adhere all the pieces together using some Aileen's Tacky Glue. To 
To finish up, I used a gray Copic marker to color the legs and part of the wings and then applied some glitter glue to the wings. And here's the finished project. If you found this project inspiring, look below the video and please hit the like button. I really appreciate it. A lot of time goes into making these videos and that really helps me out. Also, if you want to see more video content from my channel, hit the subscribe button below. Thanks so much for watching today. See you next time.